Coming up, Mary Jo continues her Day 6 Beach Adventure. From points across California, you're listening to the Disneyland edition of the Diz Unplugged. This is the Diz Unplugged Disneyland edition, episode 540 for the week of January 10th, 2016. The Diz Unplugged Disneyland Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, helping you plan the perfect Disneyland vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. I am your host, Tom Bell, and I'm joined by my good friends, Nancy Johnson. Hey! Mary Jo Malata Willie. Hello! And Luella Loriola. Hi, everyone! So, this is our first Day 6 adventure of the new year. Um, we'll remind folks, of course, what the heck Day 6 is all about. Sure. Well, <laughs> as a lot of people know, for almost everybody in the world except our Australian friends, Disneyland only offers five-day park hoppers. That's the max that you can get when you go visit. Or the next step up is to get an annual pass, and a lot of people don't do that. And so what we decided that we would do is give alter alternatives to how to spend your vacation in Southern California since there's so much to see. Well, you're here visiting Disneyland, um, the Disneyland Resort. You can also intersperse some of these other adventures in there. So we call them the Day 6 Adventures. Very cool. So we've talked a lot about um, beaches the last last few segments, last few day six segments. Um, are we beached out yet? No, are we beached? I think I have two more segments. This one and one okay, more, cool. but it won't awesome. be continued. There's just so much. There's so much to do. Our yeah. beach communities are pretty mm -hmm. awesome. Well, it's not just about the beaches. It's about about the communities. Right. Yeah. Right. All right, where do we leave off? Where, where well, are we going next? Okay, well, in this segment, I'm going to continue. Okay, and as I say that, I, I'm not going to read. I'm sorry I have to interject this. I can't read chat. So if any questions come up, I'm depending on you guys to tell me if anybody has okay. is going All to right, ask All right, I'm in Mixler. All right. Somebody's thanks. asking for recipes, but. <laughs> so in this segment, I'm going to continue me meandering down the coast along the south-facing beaches. In prior segments that you can find um, in the index on the Disneyland forum or in our on our webpage, you I talked about the West Beaches that included Santa Monica, Hermosa, Redondo Beach. Then I went around the Palos Verdes Peninsula to San Pedro or San Pedro, as some of the locals call it. Then crossed the Vincent Thomas Bridge to Long Beach, where I talked about Long Beach in two segments because there was so much going on there. So now we're going to continue to visit the beaches south of Long Beach. Last we left off, we we checked out the. Um, the area called Naples, which were the homes along the little canals that they have there, and you could ride the gondolas, etc. And so now we're going to cross over the Los, Los Alamitos Bay. And the Los Al Alamitos Bay is um, pretty much a naval reserve over there. Not what you typically think of as a, as a base, but it is military land. So there's not too much that you can do over there. They do have some restaurants. They do have some harbor cruises. But it's... And, my opinion is it's easier to find the cruises at Long Beach or Newport Beach. And these are small cruises, and I would leave it to the locals for them. So the next beach that we come to is Seal Beach, which has been around since 1915. It's really a, a nice beach community, very slow um, if you do go there. And if you're looking to have a bite to eat um, at a place that's right on the beach, there's a restaurant called River's End Cafe that's right there on the beach. It opens at 7 a.m. and it's where the San Gabriel River meets the Pacific Ocean. It is closed on Mondays and Tuesdays and the corner that it sits on is first in ocean. So if you're on Pacific Coast Highway that we call PCH, get off on first street, go west, and at the end of the street, you're going to see this cafe there, which is really nice and I'm actually planning on going there the last day of the month. Um, there's also Main Street that you can walk up and down, and they have a lot. They have like 40 shops on this one street, so they have a lot of boutiques. They have a lot of little places to eat. Again, it's pretty quiet. It's a lot of locals there and the, the beach people that I call them. 
And if you <laughs> also you go there, them, huh? well, they, <laughs> that's what I mean. Well, you know, the, the people who like, I, I'm driving over there and you're seeing, I'm watching people going home, still wearing their wetsuits from surfing in the afternoon in February. So these are truly lovers of the, of the ocean and the beach. But on Main Street, when you're on there, they have the Pacific Electric Tower Car, which was built in 1925. And it's now used as a red car museum. And if you remember in my other segments, I had mentioned that there was a red car that went from Los Angeles and to all the beach communities. And if you look on Google Maps, you can see these green belts that used to be the line. So in Redondo Beach and in Seal Beach, where you see the median is this big, like a green park between in between the streets. That's where the red car used to run down. So it's kind of cool knowing that history and then seeing how it's laid out in the maps today. But the uh, red car, like I said, was an electric train system that connected parts of Southern California with the beaches. And um, I think that this little museum, and it is small, it's worth a stop. And you could probably spend, you know, 15 minutes or so while you're there looking at the other shops, etc. If you don't want to eat at that restaurant that I had mentioned a little earlier... Um, they have another restaurant that I do recommend on Main Street, and it's called The Hangout. And it's typical American fare type food. You, If you're lucky, you get a view looking out at, over the ocean, and you can see the Seal Beach Pier. And I've eaten there several times, and it's a really nice little place. After you finish eating there, you can either continue looking through the boutiques and the other shops, or you can just walk out on the pier and see what people have been fishing, you know, check it out. They also have a lot of benches there. I have seen seals swimming around the pier, the pier, and so I thought, well, that kind of makes sense, Seal Beach, and you see seals here. So you do see a lot of um, marine life there. I've seen um, manta rays, um, the seals, and, of course, all the, the birds and everything over there. So I think that one's really neat. There's also um, parking right near the pier and there's a nice stretch of beach to walk along in this area so if you want to put your feet in the sand this is a good place to go to there's big sand dunes right now to protect the homes from the high waves that will be coming with el nino so you'll see them kind of like a berm that they've built up made of sand in front of the homes and stuff but it doesn't really detract from the beach itself so just pay attention to that when you go there um back in i think in the 1980s when el nino came that really did damage to the homes. So ever since then, they've built up the dunes to kind of protect them. And I like Seal Beach because it's more of a quiet beach community, and it's not really touristy like some of the other places we've talked about before, like Santa Monica and Long Beach, etc. The pier itself is the second longest wood pier in California. It was built in 1906, and it measures 1,865 feet in length. And for those movie buffs of you, the pier has been used in movies such as As Good As It Gets, American Pie 2, Apollo 13, and American Sniper, which was the the latest film. In the summertime, there's concerts on the pier from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., and it seems like there's activities happening throughout the year. In February, there's a surf championship, summer concerts, as I mentioned previously. There's a classic car show on the last Saturday in April, kite festival in early fall, um, which happens to be the Southern California's largest kiting event. There's a 5K and 10K the first week of April, Arts and Crafts Fair the weekend after Labor Day. So throughout the year, there's different things happening. There are events happening besides the, just enjoying the beach itself. Also, if you would like to take surf lessons, there's the m M&M Surfing School, which is located next to the pier, so it's really convenient. You can also rent bicycles right along the San Gabriel River. And the trail there is 70 miles long, and it goes up to Azusa, California. So I think you'll tire out before you run out of bike trail when you go along there. And as an aside, you can also do this from Santa Monica, where you can ride to Torrance Beach. I've done that one, where you ride along the Strand there, and it's about 20 miles. And it took us all day to go back and forth, but that's because we stopped at the piers and had a drink. So you have to factor in downtime when you do those type of things. Um, this is a great time of year to go because of our weather. Um, personally, I think the sunsets during January, February are some of the most beautiful sunsets that we have in California because of the clouds 
and how it sits. Um, last week, we had some amazing sunsets. And I was at Disneyland, and I was like, I really want to go to the beach and get the sunset, but I couldn't make it there in time, and so I didn't do it. But this is, like I said, a really good time to go. There's also in um, Seal Beach, they have the Gum Grove Nature Park, which is great for hiking. And for those of you who have dogs, you can take them there. Um, with the rain that we're getting, this will be beautiful with all the spring, for all the spring flowers. So I'm talking March, April, for those of you who are going to be visiting at that time. And they do say to keep an eye out for coyotes. So having said that, the trails here are fine for people who are just out for a stroll and not into strenuous hiking. And you won't be running from the coyotes. They're going to be running from you. So don't worry about them. Um, Seal Beach also has a national wildlife refuge that's a little over 900 acres. And the best time for bird watching is now during the months of January and February. And during the spring, it's great for catching the flowers bloom. So before I continue, I'm just going to let you guys know I'm going to be there on January 30th uh, for the for the nature walk. For if anybody wants to, any locals want to join, or if anybody's visiting, um, the National Wildlife Refuge in Seal Beach. And there are some endangered species here. And because the refuge is on a military base, the public is only allowed to visit with prior permission. And that's why they have the guided walking tours on the last Saturday of each month. Starts at 8.30 a.m. and goes until 11.30 a.m. Reservations are required by the Wednesday before. And I'll quickly say the phone number, 562-598-1024 for anybody who wants to go. Um, you do have to be a U.S. citizen and provide photo ID when you go there. If you're looking for a private beach, I'm going to continue. If you're looking for a private beach, the next one after Seal Beach and continuing south is the Surfside Beach. The beach itself is public, but there's no parking here because it's a gated residential area um, that abuts the beach. You can park outside the gated area and walk to the beach, though, or you can go south and then walk to the beach. Um, you'll find it certainly uncrowded because there's not a parking lot right there. And there's also some vacation rentals there. So if any of you want to look them up on um, VRBO or B&B. One of the coolest ones that I've seen is a converted water tower. So as you're driving down Pacific Coast Highway, you're going to see this big brown water tower that's actually converted into a vacation rental. So anybody who wants to stay somewhere, just, just think of the view that you would have of the ocean and everything if you stayed there. And they do have an elevator that goes to the top. And you do sleep up on top. So next to Surfside Beach, and it's easier to access, is a beach called Sunset Beach. And there's homes along this beach too, but it's not a gated community. And you can park there um, among the, they have a, like a green belt between the houses. And you can park there and then walk to the beach. There's not a parking lot um, to say. So I was over there just a couple of days ago and I saw all the beach access. Again, you're not going to, it's not going to be very crowded because it's not a touristy area. So if you're looking for something more quiet and you want to see what is, what it's like to be in Southern California and these beach communities, the Sunset Beach is another really good place to go to. And what's kind of cool about Sunset Beach too is that there's a lot of little, um, mom and pop type diners that you can just walk to from the beach. So you can just park your car, hang out at the beach, then go grab a bite to eat. Or if you want to go to a grocery store and, you know, get picnic items and have a picnic on the beach too. It's really, really nice. Um, like I said, Pacific Coast Highway is not too far away. So they also have a lot of restaurants and bigger restaurants over there too. Famous notables who lived here would be Sandra Bullock. She lived there for a while and so they got a lot of, um, publicity because of that and also there was a tv series called sunset beach and though it was based on this community it wasn't actually filmed here in case you guys were thinking about that i didn't know that i remember that tv show sunset beach uh -huh. i used to always when i drove by sunset beach wonder because it didn't look the same but i guess it's just based on it yeah you know they they these people they drive through there or they know somebody who lives there and then so they say, hey, let's 
base our show on this. And, you know, even though we know that Hollywood is usually true to form, sometimes they do kind of exaggerate and make things up. So, no. <laughs> Say it isn't so. The next thing you're going to tell me is Beverly Hills 90210 wasn't filmed in Beverly Hills 90210. Well, some of it was. They actually filmed the Griffith, used the Griffith Park Observatory for that show. <laughs> They also they also used Manhattan Beach for for the beach house on that show. I know where that house is, but um anyway, so that's that's where it is. And then just north of of Sunset Beach is Huntington Harbor, and it has five man made islands there. And there's a lot of rich people who live there, and they the, it's the kind of homes that they have their boats tied up in their backyard, and so or there's no yards, it's the back dock. Um, but if you like kayaking and you don't want to kayak on the ocean, they do have rentals there and you, and the water's a lot calmer and you can see some cool scenery or, you know, check out houses that you will never buy. And, um, they also have canoes, hydro bikes and inflatable rafts with, um, motors for rent if you want to do something like that. And that's the Huntington Harbor that's just by, in that area by Sunset Beach. And then if we continue south, we're going to come upon Bolsa Chica Beach Park, which is a very popular park here. Um, it could be considered the beginning of Surf City, USA, even though um, the Beach Boys lived by El Segundo Beach and hung out there on the West Beaches. The surfing beaches were really Huntington and Bolsa Chica. Um, the Bolsa Chica, um, Bolsa Chica means small bag, and there's a whole other story um, to that. It was part of a land grant um, that was called Las Bolsas, and they cut it, they they divided it, and the smaller one was called Bolsa Chica. So that's how this got, that's how they got their name. Um, the beach itself is three miles long. It's great for those long walks on the beach that people like to dream about. You know, when you say, what do you like to do? I says, I like nice, quiet walks on the beach, etc. Well, this is perfect to do it there. The waves are milder because the, the, Sea sh the sea floor is um, sh shallower, so the waves don't build up like they do at Huntington Beach. So it's great if you're learning to surf or even to boogie board and you don't want to get those big waves. This is a good place to do that. Um, the beach is open from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Back in the, I believe it was the 1980s, there were some riots during spring break. And after that happened, all the beaches had curfews. So I remember when we used to be able to go to the beach till one o'clock in the morning and, but now it's all the beaches here are closed at 10 PM. So even, even saying, even having said that, one of the cool things about the Bolsa Chica beach is that they have fire rings and picnic areas that can be reserved and they have basketball courts, which I think are so, so, um, I think the picnic areas are kind of outrageous on what they're charging. They, Anywhere from fifty to a hundred dollars to two hundred dollars, depending on uh, if it's a holiday or in the weekends. But the fire rings are free, so it's first come, first serve. You get there first thing in the morning. A lot of people, what they do is like on the holidays, etc. They'll go early in the morning and stake out their fire ring, and just somebody will camp out there until the rest of the family and friends show up. So if that's something that you would like to experience, it's a lot of fun. They also have a paved bike trail that goes down to the neighboring Huntington Beach. And that bike trail is about eight and a half miles long. So you can rent the bikes either on Bolsa Chica or Huntington Beach. Another cool thing about Bolsa Chica is that they have RV camping. And the RV camping is allowed year round. And they have the hookups and everything. But there's no tent camping. So for those of you who are visiting Disneyland who are looking for RV camping and you don't mind a bit of a drive, you can stay there. It's about 20 miles or so from the Disneyland parks. So you're looking maybe about a half hour to 45 minute drive, depending on traffic, to get to the parks from the beach. But you're almost like having the best of both worlds. You're at the beach um, having wonderful time, and then you're also visiting the Disneyland Resort. Another cool thing about this beach is it's wheelchair accessible. And they have beach wheelchairs that are available for use. You don't, they're free of charge. And it's to um, get the people down to the sand. So I think that's a really neat feature that they have. If you want to learn to surf, this is going to be all along these beaches. They have um, surf schools. You could check out Corky Carroll Surf School. They offer private, semi-private, and weekly programs to learn how to surf. 
This whole area also, you're going to hear me talking about the ecological reserves because it's a big thing in California trying to um, refurbish the land that has been negatively affected um, by the oil companies, etc. So there's a lot of these ecological reserves that are set to to bring life back to California. So you have the Bolsa Chica one, which is 1,300 acres uh, coastal estuary. And unlike the reserve in Seal Beach, this one is open to the public. There are two public parking lots, and at each parking lot, there are four miles. Between them, there's four miles of trails with scenic overlooks. There's also an interpretive center located at the north lot. So if you get tired of being at the beach or you want to get out of the sun or you just want to walk, in addition to just being on the sand and everything, you can go to these reserves and just see all the the uh, waterfowl that's there. And sometimes you can see they said that they've been able to see um, leopard sharks, manta rays, and some of the other fish that um, swim in there. Alongside the ecological reserve is the Bolsa Chica Basin State Marine Conservation Area. And this area was basically set up as the California program to restore wetlands, um, like I've said earlier, um, besides the oil companies and the other industrial practices that just really did a number. Um, this area is not open to the public. You can see it in the distance, but it's truly there to to um, restore um, some of our animals here that were going extinct. But let's go back to our beaches. The next beach we come to is Huntington Beach, and there's so much going on here. You could definitely spend a whole day at this beach. And where I said that Bolsa Chica was the beginning of Surf City, USA, Huntington Beach ep uh, epitomizes this title. I have driven down PCH and seeing father and son in the morning coming fr from the beach, um, surfing in the morning, going back home, you know, walking. And even in the afternoon, there were people yesterday surfing probably like 4 p.m. And it was already it was kind of raining and people were out there surfing. So it's kind of cool when you see them. These are pretty rugged folks, I think. But there's like I said, there's a lot to do in Huntington Beach. There's a historical downtown walking tour. You can download the tour from the web. Um, there's a PDF or you could just print out the page. And it has a lot of, a lot of, um, points out the different buildings there and the historical significance. So, um, one of the things they say is like in the early 1900s, the Pacific Electric Railway building near the pier was a stop for the Pacific Electric red cars. Um, the railroad mogul, Henry Huntington, Remember I mentioned his nephew when I visited the Huntington Library a few segments ago? Yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> that which is I still recommend that as a as a excellent day six adventure. But um Henry Huntington, hence the name Huntington Beach, um ensured that the cars ran through Huntington Beach to Newport Newport Beach and he helped develop the area. So the first also, the first trailer campground in the nation was located just south of the pier. In addition to this trivia, you'll learn a lot more about the city of Huntington Beach, how it began, and about the buildings there. So I personally, I think it's a really nice way to spend an afternoon. I always like to learn about the culture of any place that I visit, and this is one way to do it. Um, right in that area, you have Huntington Beach Pier. I think a lot of people, when you think of Huntington Beach, you think of the pier because it's symbolic of the whole area. The current pier was dedicated in 1992, and it's the longest concrete municipal pier in the U.S. It's 1,850 feet. It's been destroyed by storms three times, significant damage. Um, the first one was in 1914, 1938, and then again in 1983. We, that destroyed, that storm, or those storms in 1983 destroyed a lot of our piers on the coast. Um, like I said, the pier is an inso symbolic um, symbol of, of our symbolic heart of the Huntington Beach. And at the end of the pier is Ruby's Diner. So a lot of you, when you think of Huntington Beach, you'll have that image of the pier with Ruby's Diner at the end. And again, this is another great place to have a bite to eat, enjoy the ocean air, also to watch the sunset and see the sea life that's around in the area. It's one of those places that you go to and you just think, oh gosh, life is really good right now. It's just so cool. Across from Huntington Beach Pier, you have Main Street, and there's a plethora of places to eat. There, you Anything you want to eat, you're going to find over there. They have a lot of sidewalk cafes, a lot of little shops. It's just a really um, lively place to go to. Um, Tuesday nights in Huntington Beach, 
they have what they call Surf City Nights. And I didn't know about this. And this, I'm definitely going to do this. Okay. So Surf City Nights is, is year round. It's a weekly street fair every Tuesday night. They shut down traffic on three blocks and locals and visitors enjoy live music, food stands, a farmer's market. And in addition to the farmer's market, there's sidewalk sales with clothes, jewelry, etc. to browse through. It's also a family event with plenty to do for the children. They have all face painting and other activities for the kids there. So Surf City Nights are held from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. on Main Street between PCH and Orange Avenue. And um, if it's, of course, if there's inclement weather, they're not going to have it because it is an outdoor event. And then in addition to Surf City Nights, they have Art Affair, which is held on Fridays and select weekends. And this is uh, held at Pier Plaza, which is right next to the Huntington Beach Pier. Here you're going to find all kinds of handcrafted items, including paintings, photography, jewelry, clothes, um, all kinds of accessories, woodwork, paper crafts, soaps, different things that are ha- hand- homemade. Um, it takes place year round also, and it's usually from 12 noon to 7 p.m. or 12 noon to sunset, whichever comes first. On certain weekends, the art fair is open from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. or sunset, whichever comes first. And of course, if there's bad weather again, they'll, they'll cancel it. But again, this is such a cool way to spend um, a day six after the beach and, and just hang out with the locals and listen to the music. You know, a lot of the beach communities do that, too. Like, I think we forgot to mention when you talked about Venice, um, that Venice has like a first Friday's. Where they have food trucks and all that. That, you know, that's really popular too. And it's not just, it's not, I wouldn't really say it's a tourist thing because a lot of locals do do that. You know, they just want to go let their hair down and just relax. And you, you, you have to admit, going to the beach is just a lot of fun. Um, if you wanted some um, good places to eat, they have Duke's Huntington Beach. Um, you can re- make reservations mm-hmm. on Open Table. And it's a restaurant right next to the pier. It's a great spot if you want to be close to the beach. And the site itself says, with epic waves breaking along eight and a half miles of sand, Huntington Beach epitomizes the California beach style. It was here that Duke Kam- Kahanamoku. Kamakawa. There. Oh, Duke, Duke Kanamo- uh, Ka- Kahanamoku. Kahanamoku, yeah. The he legendary was the Hawaiian legendary Hawaiian surfer. guy. Say that again, Nancy? He was the legendary Hawaiian surfer. Right. Yeah, he won Olympic uh, medals, and mm-hmm. he's the person who introduced um, surfing not only to the su- South Cal- California beaches, but to um, Australia also. There's so, a statue of him on Waikiki Beach. Oh, that would be cool. And I'll Julia. see. Yep. Well, the restaurant is dedicated to him. That's why they call it Duke's Huntington um Huntington Beach, or they call it Dukes. Dukes is actually a chain. Well, yeah, but but it's a good chain. It's a really it's a good chain, chain and and it's our Dukes. Yes, it's our Dukes. (laughs) Yeah. So um, I would recommend that restaurant if you're in Huntington Beach. Um, Rather than eating, even though it's a chain restaurant, I would eat there rather than at P.F. Chang's or something like that on Main Street, where you could be right there on the beach and take advantage of 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 being there. If you want to stay in Huntington beach, um, the big resort, there's the Hyatt Regency Huntington beach. Um, it's called the Hyatt Regency Huntington beach. And actually dreams and limited travel does book reservations. They have the Southern California package, which is Disneyland and Huntington beach or Disneyland in Hollywood or Disneyland in Newport beach and Hyatt Regency Huntington beach is one of them. And I believe that, Pete and Corey and Julie, et cetera, et al., um, they recorded, they had a segment where that they recorded at this hotel. So you might want to check that out also if you want to get more details about it. Gosh, that um, was when they, they came out here with Bob back in yeah, long time ago when I first long started listening. Ago. Yeah. So it's, it's um, well worth the visit. And you can also... Um, if you're not staying there, you can also rent some of the thing um, activities that they have there if you pay, of course. Um, Huntington Beach, like Bolsa Chica, has fire pits that are first come, first serve. You don't reserve them ahead of time and are available from use from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Expect there, expect um, people to be there early in the morning, especially on days like Independence Day, Labor Day, 
as it's very popular. And between Bolsa Chica and Huntington Beaches and on down to Newport Beach, there's about a thousand free fire rings to take advantage of. You just need to get to them early enough to hold on to them and bring your own wood. And that's it. Um, you can bring a gas grill, but I don't think too many of you who are visiting Disneyland are going to have your own gra- gas grills. But you can roast weenies and marshmallows, etc., and have a real nice picnic there on the beach. Um, in my youth, we went there. We did a lot of that during the summertime with the bonfires on the beach and watching the sun go down, the smell of the fire, um, the wood fires. It's pretty cool experience. Have any of you guys ever done that? I've done that. Yeah. You've done I've, that with your family? Yeah. We used to do that a lot when I was younger. Um, but I think the great thing about Huntington Beach, and it's just in my personal opinion, I think this is the closest one to Disneyland. So if you are staying near the Disneyland Resort, it's I I think Huntington Beach is a nice beach to get a good feel of the Southern California beaches, and it's probably not too far. I think that's an excellent um, recommendation because it is. It's and it's pretty much a straight drive to yeah, Huntington just a Beach. Straight, you don't even have to go on the freeway; just right. go straight down. <laughs> and for those of you who don't have cars, you can also take the bus to Huntington Beach because it's straight down. Um, you probably take two buses to get there, but it's a pretty easy trip, trip over there. In addition to the beach, beaches that they have there. Oh, well, let me just finish with, um, if you don't, since you have to bring wood, they don't have it. Um, you can get wood at any of the grocery stores and also the beach concessions um, do sell the firewood in bundles and they they go for about six bucks a bundle. So you might want to get a couple of them if you want to have a big fire or a long lasting fire. So in addition to the beaches, Huntington Beach is home to the Shipley Nature Center, which is 18 acres of protected land for various birds and other animals. It's open Monday to Saturday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. And on the second Saturday of each month, it's open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Free to go there, um, though they do take donations, and then parking is also free. The center is closed for Sundays and all major holidays. They also have the bike trail that I had mentioned earlier, the Huntington Beach Bike Trail. It's eight and a half ocean strand, paved path, which is great for joggers, walkers, bikers, and skaters. Um, the beach concessions along the path do rent bikes by the hour or day, and there's a store in downtown Huntington that rents electric bikes for those who want a little help getting getting along. The Ocean Strand also connects the Santa Ana River Trail that goes for an additional 110 miles if you're feeling quite ambitious and you want to go take the trail and bike up to Big Bear Lake. Um, but I would, if you do that, let me know because I, I just want to bow to you for doing something like that. The Santa Ana River Trail is probably the best time to go, even if you just go on part of it, is in the spring because of all the flowers that are blooming and it's not so hot. Huntington Beach also has a central park, which has 365 acres with miles of trails and walking paths. The World Trail is just a little over a mile, and it offers 18 exercise stations. Huntington Central Park also offers a disc golf course, horse rentals, batting cages, softball, baseball fields, and plenty of other outdoor things to do. And while I'm talking about the rentals that you can get there, they also rent out boogie boards um, for to do some body surfing, there on the beach, but you can also, I recommend getting boogie boards, um, when you go to the beach, just because it's fun to do the body surfing when you're over there and they're, they're not real expensive. You can get them at Walmart or Target, etc. Um, if you're learning how to surf, you can take lessons at the Bonsai Surf School. In addition to group lessons, they offer private lessons that last about two hours where you have about, um, you get a personal coach surfboard and wetsuit and they also teach young children if you want to have even have the experience of trying to surf you could do that um the best time to learn to surf is in the morning since the afternoon tends to get a bit windy and that's for our whole coast the the calmest the water is is in the morning about 2 p.m the waves start getting really choppy in addition to all of this fun things huntington beach also has a dog beach so for those of you who bring your your best friend canine, Um, you can bring them to Huntington Beach. It's at the corner of Golden West and PCH. It's one of the country's top 10 dog-friendly beaches. 
And they have events here too, so that you can do with your dog. On Monday nights, you can bring your pooch to the doggy date nights at Fred's Mexican Cafe, where you and your best friend can dine at al fresco on the patio no spinning chairs though the dogs eat for free with an entree order and every september surf city dog brings together two huntington beach favorites which is dogs and surfing the weekend long event features everything from a fashion show to canine surfing competition so there's a huntington beach is probably the best all around and like Luella said, it is the closest beach to the Disneyland Resort and really easy to get to. And I'm going to stop here at Huntington Beach because there's the next segment is going to be Newport Beach and there's a lot to talk about Newport Beach. Oh, yeah, and there is. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot. And then um, we'll probably end with that and, and talk about probably Laguna Beach and maybe finish with that. Very cool. Mm-hmm. It's, I, I have so much fun um, doing research on these. And like I said, this on the uh, last Saturday of January, I'm actually going to go to the reserve at Seal Beach and do that walking tour with a, with a docent. There's just so much going on here that is available to all of us, whether we live here or whether we're visiting from someplace else. And you get to see a little bit of the Southern California lifestyle or our, our own nature and everything that California has to offer. It's really nice. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Mary Jo. Thank you, everyone. That is going to do it for this segment of The Design Plugged. Be sure to catch all of our other Diz shows this week. And, of course, we will be back again with you next week. Until then, remember, Disneyland is always more magical when it's shared. Thanks for listening.